A warm welcome to all the students. Continuing with our discussion on the classification of animal kingdom after phyla Porifera, Nideria, Dinophora, Platyhelminthes, and Nematoda. Let's now discuss phyla Annelida and Arthropoda. So let's start with phylum Annelida. This phylum has derived its name from the Greek word Annelus, which means a little ring. Since their body is divided into ring-like segments, they have been named as Annelidae. They have a long, narrow, worm-like body, which, as the name shows, is divided into ring-like true metameric segments. Therefore, they are also known as segmented worms. As we discussed in our earlier sessions, that true metamerism means that the organs present in one segment show a serial repetition in all the segments. That is true metamerism. Around 9000 species of this phylum are known till date. Let's have a look at the general characteristics of the members of this phylum. The members of Annelida are bilaterally symmetrical. They exhibit organ system level of body organization. They are triploid plastic, that means they have three germ layers, ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm. They are coelomate. Their body cavity is a true coelome between the elementary canal and the body wall and is lined by mesoderm. Their body wall is made of not just epidermis but also thick muscular layers, hence they are known as dermomuscular. Their body is divided into a number of segments known as metamers. They show true metamerism, that means one segment has organs which are repeated serially in other segments as well, as opposed to pseudometamerism, in which the organs in one system do not have any relation to the organs are found in other segments. The locomotion takes place with the help of unjointed chitinous appendages, which are known as CT. Their digestive system is complete, that means their Digestive canal has two openings and has specialized parts. The blood vascular system is of closed type, that is, it never leaves the network of capillaries. We have discussed open type of blood vascular system in the early phyla, in which the blood is pumped into open spaces called sinuses, which are actually part of the body cavity, therefore they are also known as hemocele. The excretory system in annelids consists of segmentally arranged nephridia. That means each segment has a pair of nephridia. Nervous system consists of a pair of ganglia which constitute the brain and a double ventral nerve cord. The annelids are mostly hermaphrodites. That is, they contain male as well as female sexual organs. The gonoducts are derived from coelom. Therefore, they are known as coelomoducts and are connected with nephridia. The development may be direct or indirect through a larval stage. Phylum Annelida has been further classified into classes Polychaeta, Oligochaeta, Herodenia, and Archaeanelida. Now let's have a look at some of the important characteristics of the members of class Polychaeta. They are marine and carnivorous. Their head region consists of prostomium and peristomium. Prostomium is the lobe anterior to the mouth and peristomium is the lobe around the mouth. Together they form the head. The head also bears eyes, tentacles, cirri which are slender cylindrical sensory organs and palps which assist in feeding. CT are numerous and are borne up on the lateral appendages of the body wall known as asparapodia. Clitorum which is uh, an organ which secretes mucus during the copulation to keep the worms paired is absent. Elementary canal has an irreversible buccal region and protrusible pharynx with jaws. The excretory organs are segmentally paired and are known as nephridia. The sexes are separate. The fertilization is external. Development is indirect through a larval stage. The larva is free swimming trochophore larva. A sexual reproduction takes place by budding. The examples of this class are Nevis, Aphrodite, Pollinae, Ketopteris. Trochophore larva is found in the developmental cycle of Nevis. Aphrodite is commonly known as sea mouse because it is covered with a thick, dense mat of hair like chitin. 
This diagram shows the transverse section of a polyethylene. The outer surface of the body wall consists of a simple columnar epithelium covered by a thin cuticle. Underneath it is a thin layer of connective tissue, a layer of circular muscle, a layer of longitudinal muscle, and a peritoneum surrounding the body cavity. Additional muscles move the parapodia. Digestive tract is a simple tube. The chlorogogon tissue present is a site of amino acid metabolism. It is analogous to the liver of higher animals. The smallest species and those adapted to burrowing breathe through their general body surface. Most other species, however, have external gills, generally, although not always, associated with the parapodium. Now, parapodium is a paddle like extension on either side of most segments of the body. The biramus appendage consists of a ventral division known as neuropodium and a dorsal division known as notopodium, each of which is supported by a stiff chitinous rod known as aciculum. A dorsal cirrus and a ventral cirrus, richly supplied with sensory receptors project from the notopodium and neuropodium respectively. Simple but well-developed circulatory system is found. There are two main blood vessels, the dorsal blood vessel and the ventral blood vessel. With smaller vessels to supply the parapodia and the gut. Blood flows forward in dorsal vessel above the gut and returns back down the body in the ventral vessel beneath the gut. The blood vessels themselves are contractile, helping to push the blood along. So, most species do not require a heart. In a few species, muscular pumps, analogous to a heart, are found in various parts of the system. Nervous system consists of a ventral nerve cord running along the length of the body with ganglia and a series of small nerves in each segment. The brain lies in the upper part of the head. The next class of final annelida is class Oligochaeta. The mammals of this class are mostly terrestrial, though some are freshwater forms. Their body has conspicuous external and internal segmentation. They have a distinct head, but eyes and tentacles are absent. Parapodia are absent as well. The CT are usually arranged segmentally. Flatulum is mostly present. Pharynx is not aversible and lacks jaws. They are hermaphrodites, that is, a single organism contains both male as well as female sex organs. The development in the members of this class is direct and takes place within the cocoons which are secreted by the clitinum. There are no free larval stage in the development. The examples of this class are tubifer and ferritima, which is commonly known as earthworm.